What happens if the climate changes abruptly? It has happened many times in the past. The Intimate Field School at Hamelsey aims to understand how the environment responded to climate changes that took place over more than 10,000 years ago. Different experts and young scientists from all over Europe join the event. Working together, they want to retrieve and investigate a sediment core from Hamelsey, a lake in northern Germany. If successful, they will reveal the story of how the ecosystem and landscape has changed since the last ice age, teaching us not only about our past, but also our future. When we think about future climate, it's quite certain that climate will change, both as a consequence of anthropogenic, so human impact, but also uh, just because climate has always been changing. We can much better deal with gradual climate change in the future because we can adapt. But, but uh, we know from, from, from the past climate history that climate has also been changing in a very abrupt way um, at some points in history, where weather patterns and temperatures have changed over a few years, corresponding to maybe moving a thousand kilometers or more north and south in Europe. So we know it has happened and we fear that it may happen again. And part of our research is to try to assess the, what are the conditions under which this can happen and uh, figure out whether we are able to, to, uh, to come with some probabilities or make some warnings about what will happen. Intimate means, uh, first of all, it's an acronym meaning uh, integrating ice core marine and terrestrial records to compare um, records of past climate change from uh, different archives. And archives for us are either terrestrial, which are, for instance, lakes, uh, Marine archives are uh, sediment cores taken from the ocean uh, and ice cores, uh, which are taken from the polar regions uh, of the Earth. We know a lot from these records, we know a lot how climate has changed globally and how it's changed in certain regions. Uh, but one of the big unknowns in terms of the future climate change is how is climate changing on smaller regional scales? What are the consequences of a changing climate here in Western Europe, for example? I applied for, for this workshop um, mainly because I wanted to um, first spend some time with the, some of the guys that are here and um, to have the possibility to actually go and and, uh, and core and, and touch uh, the sediments from this, this quite famous site. Paleoclimatology is quite cool because it comprises a broad range of uh, disciplines. So you actually, you know, you, you, you can study the atmosphere, the ocean, the ice sheets. And what you really do is try to get an understanding of how all these components of the Earth system interact. I really, really like the idea that uh, someday I will kind of unlock just a tiny piece of the mystery that is the climate system. Thank you. One of the things that has been useful, I think, when we've been mixing the students up and making them work together is that they're learning a bit about each other's methods. A lot of the time people take other people's methods and results for granted. We don't really always evaluate something fully if we don't understand it. So this is um, a nice opportunity for people to start learning a little bit more about the background to some of the data that they might use because it complements theirs. Okay guys, we just wanted to get you together quickly just to say a big welcome and thank you for coming on this summer school or training school. Um, it's been a long time in the planning and the thinking, so we're really pleased that you guys all arrived. Yeah. We were really, really impressed with the calibre of the applications. So we hope that we've got a real crack team here this week and we're going to do some good science. Well, I guess if I look at the group of participants we have, it ranges from biologists growing plants under controlled circumstances in a greenhouse who never go outside, to uh, geologists who normally work on long time scales and, and who reconstruct the glacier movement in, in, in the southern hemisphere to people who are used to working in an environment such as where we're in at the moment. Despite all that you are speaking English, 
<laughs> we're actually joining the coring team now. And the idea is that we'll build up the raft, put it on the lake, and from there take a deep course going through the entire Holocene down into the lake glacier. We are here at the Himmelsee in Lower Saxony in, in uh, northern Germany. Uh, we are here because this lake contains a very interesting and detailed uh, record of warped, a warped sediment record. We know that we know for this from previous research. This lake here has uh, formed at the end of the last ice age when the glaciers have, have retreated. So it basically contains material from that time at the very bottom. And we try to get there. Yeah, here's inside. We make a untersuchung nach Klimaveränderung seit der letzten Eiszeit. Und seit der letzten Eiszeit sind hier in diesem See Sedimente abgelagert worden, die sich verändern, wenn das Klima sich verändert. Und wir werden jetzt mit dem Floß in die Mitte des Sees gehen und einen ungefähr 20 Meter langen Sedimentkern daraus holen. Und äh, der Kern wird dann aufgemacht, in Proben unterteilt und dann analysiert auf Temperaturveränderungen, Niederschlagsveränderungen, Vegetationsgeschichte des Gebiets hier seit der letzten Eiszeit. Schön. Da ja, weiß man halt ein bisschen mehr Bescheid, ne? Ja, ja, die ganze ja. Sache hier. Ja, wieder, in die Kopf. Ja. Moin. Ja, du warst. Sieh, dann habe ich doch noch ein Feiter, auch von einem Feiter. My very personal, well, my very personal motivation is, is how to to understand a very complex system like, uh, well, nature. You see how nature responds to, to to climate change. You see how the lake responds to an increase in temperature. How animals and people respond to climate. Yeah, well, well, people start swimming now, but what did they do in the past? Ich denke, dass dieses Sommercamp dazu beiträgt, dass wir unser Wissen vertiefen. Und dazu gehören zwei Dinge. Erstens vertiefen und das Zweite die Netzwerke aufzubauen. Dass einer auf den Rücken, auf den Schultern des anderen steht. Und dass man, es gibt eine verschiedene Sorten von Teamwork. Und ein ganz wichtiger Punkt, den ich immer wieder sage, ist, Teamwork ist nicht, dass einer das tut, der andere das tut und am Schluss guckt man alles zusammen. Teamwork geht so. Immer zusammen sein, immer gucken, was tust du, kann ich das für mich nutzen, hast du das schon gesehen, guck doch mal bei deinen Daten nach. Und auf diese Weise kommt man nicht zu Wahrheiten, die auf der Seite liegen, sondern man hebt die Wahrheiten auf ein höheres Niveau. Ja, darum. I applied for this because I wanted to see what really means to um, to go through all the steps from initiating and conducting a project and then to, to see how people are working together and like collaborating. This is this is like a challenge in other words because I have to to try to to make new connections to meet people so I have to go abroad to do the analysis and then coming back home and trying to to publish things and trying to analyze and to interpret them. First of all, we are we are taking samples from the water, so we are. Uh, sampling water at different depths. Uh, we are taking sediment to modern, like the upper layer, the mud, uh, and we're collecting also leaves from plants which are growing here. And this is done to understand the lake today. Um, then we also take a long, a deep sediment core. And this is our main record. This is where a lot of people, of, uh, of students will work on. And, uh, this is done on, on the platform. So this is 960. Move down, move it down. This, look, okay. that's it. Bow bones in order. Yeah. <laughs> Hammer time. Uh, no, uh, not no. yet. Okay. <coughs> uh. um, what I like very much is that when you're here in the, in the present, and you can see what is happening, of course, but everything what you see here is a result of what happened in the past. So that's that's why we want to know what happened in the past. Maybe we can have a look in here. You have a knife? Right here. 
where we see you already have a bit over there. Look what we got. Ah, oh, wow, yeah, look at nice. that. Look at that. Is. These are fantastic laminations. Yeah. You can basically uh, read the mud like, like a book, and you have all these incredible transitions in the, um, in the, in the uh, characteristic of the sediment. And um, uh, when, you, when, you, when you see the sand, and all of a sudden you have, you have uh, mud and a lot of organic material, and you just can infer that. It was a probably an abrupt transition from, from, from cold to uh, warm climate, and you see that basically uh, it was worthwhile, and you got good material. You can go home quite happy. And... With, with with this mud that might be meaningless for 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 many, it's I mean we, we can have a, a so uh, in detail insight into past climate. So it's uh, it's not just mud. When, uh, when we were coring, we couldn't see the real material, only, only a bit that was left at the base or at the top of the, of the course. Um, but now we want to look inside the core. And that, therefore, we have to cut it open carefully from the two sides. So we cut open the tube and then we nicely cut the, the whole um, core into two halves. Yeah. Gently when it the plates. That's what happened. Uh, oh, Mr. Stopper. I'll be there. Stop here. You ready? No, it's not coming off. It's because it's quite clay rich. You just have to oh. be a bit firm. Look at that. Look at oh. that. That's a layer over there. That's fantastic. Okay. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh my god. It's an glacial oasis. <laughs> and this is very mineralogenic. This is the so we have um, a very nice sandy layer. Uh, then we have quite an abrupt, uh, sharp transition into uh, more clay uh, unit. And this brown indicates more biological activity, more vegetation, probably the development to some open forest already. So it's getting warmer, that's what we see. And then all of a sudden here, we see sand layers entering the basin, indicating that it probably becomes colder again. So we see vegetation disappearing and sand blowing into the system. When it's drier, wetter, or warmer, or colder, you, you really see that the color, for example, of the sediment is changing. Uh, so that can be the first indication. Then the second is looking in the microscope. And uh, look at the sediment under the microscope, you see there are is diatoms, and there's uh, other algae, or you see pollen. And uh, these pollen can be identified by, by specialists, so we know what type of vegetation has grown. And obviously, this is connected to the climate at that time. So, so this enables us to reconstruct climate. We want to know what's going on in the future. And our only tool really to do that is climate modeling. Because the climate system is so complex that we can't really make these predictions without using climate models as tools. The model is an independent reproduction of the same temperature curve. And if the model is capable of, of matching that, that evidence that comes from the lake bed, then we can say, OK, our model at least is, is capable of, of capturing this climate. And this gives confidence that it is also capable of, of, of um, simulating a, a future climate. With these new tools, we can start to be more precise. And really, and sometimes we're surprised. We find out things that we weren't expecting. And so then we have to come back to the question again and say, well, how can we test that? How can we check that that's correct? I think that uh, policymakers should acknowledge that, that, that the climate is an um, is a chaotic system, and I think um, it's it's better to take action than to just wait and say it's just too uncertain and uh, uh, we cannot act right now because uh, because of this uncertainty. I mean, there's a real probability that that uh, things will change dramatically. The Earth will not care about this very much because the Earth will survive without us. It's just a question of um, how we want to live. <laughs> Six segments of three meters, so 18 meters of core. And it's really deep stuff right? when, you, when you look at 15 meters of, of core. After summer, electronic scanning of the sediment cores in the laboratory already shows evidence for abrupt climate change at Lake Hemelsee. During winter time, five young researchers 
are carrying out exchange projects across Europe. Next spring, the first scientific results on Lake Hemelsey will be presented at an international meeting in Spain, while several scientific articles are in preparation.